so the second problem, and perhaps even more difficult to fix, will be this issue of the cooling pumps along the ocean and um, how to protect them. The pumps on the ocean have to be at the ocean. It's not like the diesels that you can move them up high. The pumps on the ocean have to be at the ocean because that's where the cooling water is. So um, a, a more difficult problem looking forward is um, how to move these, how to protect these safety related pumps. The um, next item was the batteries were um, not, there were not enough batteries. Batteries are not designed to turn these huge pumps inside a power plant. They were designed to last for a couple of hours to move little small valves and things like that until the diesels could be fixed. But the batteries simply were, were totally inadequate. And worldwide we need to um, increase the amount of batteries. So perhaps they can last for two days instead of four hours. The, the last item that I'd like to talk about is the containment design. We've all seen the two different explosions at Fukushima uh, uh, Daiichi Unit 1 compared to Unit 3. And in engineering, uh, there's a difference in those two explosions. On Fukushima Unit 1, the shock wave traveled at less than the speed of sound. And we call that in engineering a deflagration. Now, a deflagration can certainly be uh, damaging, as it was at Unit 1. But the explosion at Unit 3 was a different type of explosion. I measured the shock wave on Unit 3. Um, I scaled it off the building and watched the explosion move. And the shock wave on Unit 3 traveled faster than the speed of sound. That's called, in engineering terms, a detonation. Faster than the speed of sound is a detonation. Slower than the speed of sound is a deflagration. The, the difference would be in a room like this, a detonation, a deflagration, would blow out the windows and, and, and likely hurt all of us. A detonation would structurally ruin the room. So the nuclear industry needs to understand the Unit 3 explosion. Uh, it's different than what happened at Three Mile Island, which was a deflagration, and it's different than what happened at Unit 1, which was a deflagration. The Unit 3 explosion um, would do structural damage to any containment, and the nuclear industry needs to understand how that happened. I think I already discussed venting, and I won't go there. Yes, I the, um, the next thing I'd like to talk on briefly is the evacuation. It was, it was clear that by the second day of the accident, this was a level seven accident, which is um, uh, un, un, comparable to, the tr to Chernobyl. I said on CNN on um, March 15th that this was a level seven accident. At the same time, uh, the American uh, Secretary Chu of the Department of Energy said, no, it was only a level five. The, the difference is very important because it affects emergency planning and the speed at which um, individuals should be evacuated and the distance um, away from the nuclear reactor that they should be evacuated. I, have, I was an expert on the Three Mile Island nuclear accident and I see in Fukushima the same mistakes that the Americans made at Three Mile Island. At Three Mile Island and, and at Fukushima, the plant management, the people in the plant, really understood the severity of the accident. But in both cases, 30 years apart, the, um, when the plant management contacted off-site management, um, in, it was general public utilities in, in the United States, and of course it was Tokyo Electric in, in Japan, the, um, the process began to slow down. What I saw on Three Mile Island was that the corporate office was trying to um, um, protect the corporate assets and um, they actually told the plant manager not to order an evacuation despite the fact that the plant manager wanted an evacuation.
And I see the same thing at, at Fukushima. I, I believe that the uh, management on site in the first day and the first week really understood the severity of it. But senior management working up the chain um, for whatever their motivations were failed to act quickly enough. So while we learn mechanical repairs to make power plants safer, it seems to me like the lesson at Three Mile Island and the lesson at Fukushima really are institutional problems in that the, um, the corporate officers and corporate offices um, simply don't respond quick enough. In addition to the internal problems between the plant and, and Tokyo Electric offices, there of course were the, were the problems between Tokyo Electric and, um, and Japan, the, the nation of Japan. Of all of the people on the planet, the Japanese are the best at emergency planning because you have earthquakes and, and you understand that you, you need to respond in the case of an emergency. Um, and so for the problem to happen in Japan tells me that worldwide, um, it is likely that other nations would respond in a, in a very poor fashion. During the first week of the accident, I was on um, CNN, and I said then uh, that uh, women and children should have been evacuated out to at least 50 kilometers. But it gets to the first point on the slide. If you don't believe it's a severity 7 accident, you're not going to evacuate the women and children. So um, there's a, a definite connection between understanding how severe the accident was at the Japanese government and Tokyo Electric Home Office level and their response in um, inadequately moving women and children away. All of the transcripts of what I said on CNN are available on the Fairwinds website so you can confirm that I did indeed say these things. In the long term, um, the, uh, the, the issue is, one, how do we decommission the site? And secondly, how do we clean up uh, the contamination within, within Japan? I was the author of um, uh, a chapter in the first decommissioning handbook. Um, and so this is an area that I have a, uh, some specialty. The only example of a, of a dismantlement that's anywhere similar to the uh, Fukushima accident is, um, is Three Mile Island. At Three Mile Island, um, the United States spent about $2 billion just to remove the nuclear fuel from the reactor. The building is still there and will be until the other unit is shut down. But just to remove the nuclear fuel from the meltdown at Three Mile Island was about $2 billion. At Three Mile Island, the melted fuel uh, fell from the nuclear fuel rods, but it, but it laid in the bottom of the nuclear reactor. Um, at Fukushima, the meltdown has occurred through the bottom of the nuclear reactor, which complicates this at least 10 times more complicated. The difference between the two is twofold. One, Three Mile Island was only running for, six, for about um, three months, so there wasn't much residual heat in the nuclear fuel. The other reason is that um, the Fukushima reactors are boiling water reactors, and the, um, the reactor at Three Mile Island was a pressurized water reactor. In a boiling water reactor, there are 70 holes in the bottom of the nuclear reactor. In a pressurized water reactor, those holes are on the top. So when the meltdown occurred at Fukushima, it was easier for the melted fuel to escape the nuclear reactor and wind up in the bottom of the containment. The, um, the, now that the fuel, at least some of it, has left the nuclear reactor and is on the floor, no one has, there's no science about how to remove the fuel from underneath the nuclear reactor. Um, over the next 20 years, um, entire new disciplines of robotic removal will have to be developed before we can even think about removing that nuclear fuel from the bottom of the containment. I estimate that the cost to clean up just the Daiichi site will be something on the order of $60 billion US. The other term there is the 20, 
250 billion for the total cleanup. I, I believe that over the next 25 years, the um, total cleanup, especially in Fukushima Prefecture, um, will add another 190 billion U.S. to that. So 60 billion for the plant and 190, I believe it will be about a quarter of a trillion U.S. to uh, completely, uh, over the next 20 or 30 years, to completely clean up after this accident. The next bullet point relates to um, uh, additional cancers, which I believe will occur um, as a result of Fukushima. I understand that my number of about a million cancers over the next 20 years is, uh, is higher than um, a, a lot of nuclear industry experts. But I base my number on studies that came out of Three Mile Island. Um, Dr. Steve Wing at the University of North Carolina has done some extensive epidemiological studies of Three Mile Island. When I use Dr. Wing's analysis of the cancers after Three Mile Island, um, I develop a number that's on the order of a million cancers. I realize that the Nuclear Regulatory Commission says no one died after Three Mile Island, um, but I, I believe, and there's a, a lot of analysis now to indicate, in fact, that there were 10% um, increases in lung cancer, and similarly for, um, for other cancers. Those studies are just now coming out 30 years after the accident. The next item is I don't believe that um, what we call blending down the radiation is the appropriate strategy for Japan. An example is a school near here, um, near Tokyo, that had a tarp that was very contaminated. Um, what they did with that tarp um, was that they added, for every kilogram of tarp, they added a thousand kilograms of clean material and then burned it so that they could reduce the concentration of radioactivity so it could be disposed in landfill. I believe that that strategy is wrong. Um, the, the history of waste that's stored in pits are that pits leak. So instead of having several um, high concentration radioactive storage areas, most likely near the power plant, um, we are spreading that radiation out throughout Japan in many low concentration um, uh, uh, incineration pits. The strategy of um, down blending this waste and spreading it out is less expensive in the short term until these pits begin to leak. And we have to remember the radiation stays there for 300 years. So um, the likelihood of these pits leaking, maybe not this year, but in the future, becomes significant and severe. It seems to me that um, in order to solve this problem, the, the Japanese government needs to understand and admit the severity of the problem. It seems like right now they're protecting TEPCO first and the, and the people second, in my opinion. There's another alternative to building nuclear power plants in the future. And I think Japan is um, at, at what we call a tipping point. And there's an opportunity here um, uh, to change the way, not just Japan, but the way the world generates power. The, the concept of um, central station generation was absolutely needed in the 20th century. But I think that building um, more central station power plants is similar to the, the French when they built the Maginot Line. Um, they, they were fighting World War I over again as opposed to realizing that technology had changed. There, there are many technologies uh, available. And in fact, Japanese firms are at the forefront in, in quite a few of these. I, you know, um, I've owned five Mitsubishis in my, in my life, and, and, and Mitsubishi is, uh, is at the forefront in some of these uh, renewable technologies. And um, also, not just generating the power, but being able to move the power around um, Japanese firms like Toyota, Mitsubishi, and others are, are at the forefront already. So there's an opportunity here, if Japan chooses to take it, um, to, to choose a different path. 
and to, um, to generate that power in a distributed sense and with computers and smart grids.